In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a simple program that will accept base and height of a triangle from the user and calculate the area. To begin, we're going to click on our green arrow. We're going to need to get two inputs from our user. We're going to need to get the base variable. So we're going to have to prompt, make sure to put it in quotes, please enter the base of the triangle in inches and hit OK. We're also going to need the height, so we're going to put in the variable height and we'll have to prompt for please enter the height of the triangle in inches. Okay, so if you remember from geometry, to calculate, which is going to be a assignment, we'll do a process where we assign it to a new variable. We're going to make the new variable answer, and the expression that it's going to calculate will be one half base times height. So we'll store the calculation in the variable named answer. A variable is a named spot in memory and we can store things there that we can pull out and change and do things to but whatever is in that spot when we call it up is what we'll be using. So we're going to now have to show that result to the user. So we're going to want to use the output option and we'll output the area of the triangle is, make sure you leave a space, and then the plus sign, and then answer. Hit OK. Let's give it a shot, see if I made any errors in here. Please enter the base of the triangle, 5. Please enter the height of the triangle, 10. Okay, we've got an issue in this statement. Let's try doing 0.5 times base times height. I think that'll make it much happier because it's not taking the parentheses as a multiplication. In all honesty, 1 divided by 2, 1 half should work there as well, but we'll do it that way. Let's try it again. So the base is 5, the height is 10, the area is 25. And that would be 10 times 5 is 50 divided by 2. Always desk check that, but that appears to be right. So the error that I made here was that, well, I know a parenthesis should mean multiplication. The computer doesn't. You have to explicitly tell it. And I just changed 1 half to 0.5 to make that simpler. So this is your basic flowchart. Now if I was to, were to write pseudocode for this, and we'll just do pseudocode in Word. Pseudocode is to a program what an outline is when you're writing a paper. You're just giving the basic points. It doesn't necessarily have to be line for line, but it should go through all the basic logic. And usually when you start writing pseudocode, you will do it pretty much line for line. So let's compare it to the program that we have on the screen here. So if I was going to write pseudocode, I would again have begin, get base from user, get 
height from user store. Yeah, let's just put it calculate answer, which equals 0.5 base times height. display, answer, and end. And so that's your pseudocode equivalent to flowcharting. Some people like flowcharting better, some people like pseudocode better. For me, the important thing is that you need to plan before you program. When you're programming, the goal isn't just to write the program first, and I've seen a lot of students do this, where they will write the program and they'll go back and create the flowchart or the pseudocode. It should be ready aim, fire. Not ready, fire, aim. Writing a program and then creating your program plan is sort of like building a house and then drawing the blueprints. It's not a lot of sense to it, which is why you're doing applied logic where you learn the flow chart and the plan first. And you can see how it translates into something that will run. Now you'll have homework to create several different flow charts that you'll need to save and hand in in Canvas.